Welcome to Thunder Bay Podcast. In this episode, we will be heading 185 feet below the surface of Lake Huron to explore one of the most recent shipwreck discoveries in Thunder Bay, the schooner Kyle Spangler. In September of 2008, Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, in cooperation with Michigan divers Stan Stock and Tracy Zalowski, documented the wreck of the two-masted schooner Kyle Spangler. Carrying 15,000 bushels of corn, the Spangler collided with the schooner Racine in the dark off of Presque Isle on November 7, 1860. The 130-foot-long wooden shipwreck, built in 1856, was discovered in 2003 by Stan Stock, who recently made the site's location known to the sanctuary. I found, uh, I think, six wrecks from uh, Thunder Bay Island up to Presque Isle here now. So yeah, this has been a good hunting grounds. It's a real, real treasure to see the cabin still on it and intact, and both masts still up to the uh, crow's nest, and, uh, and the visibility on the wreck's been fabulous. The wreck is intact and sitting upright. Using specialized diving techniques, the team created detailed archaeological drawings and a photo mosaic of the site in an effort to assess it for public access. The team also worked with Great Lakes marine artist Robert McGreevy to develop an archaeologically based perspective drawing of the site. A National Register of Historic Places listing for the shipwreck is being sought. Participating organizations included NOAA's Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, NOAA's Maritime Heritage Program, and the National Undersea Research Center at the University of North Carolina at Wilmington. In this project update, you will hear from wreck hunter Stan Stock, maritime archaeologists Russ Green and Tane Casserly, and historian Patrick Laverty as they guide you through the documentation project on the schooner Kyle Spangler. Hi, my name is Russ Green and uh, I work for the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary and I'll be talking a little bit about our project on the schooner Kyle Spangler. We're kind of at the stern of the schooner right now and you can see those two davits that are kind of projecting off into the water. Those are actually folding davits to, to help the schooner get through the tight locks and canals it had to navigate kind of heading up the uh, the starboard side you can see the nice uh, big boom that's laying off to the side that that's actually the main mass boom the cabin is intact uh, you'll notice lots of incrustations those are actually quagga mussels kind of a cousin of the zebra mussels that's an invasive species in the Great Lakes uh, this this dive actually this footage is from our, our first dive on the Spangler uh, with Stan Stock who discovered the wreck in 2003 and we're really just getting a feel for the site and, um, and kind of figuring out what's there and how we're going to uh, approach the mapping and the documentation of the site. Most of the divers, or all the divers, are wearing doubles, um, do breathe a, a combination of helium, oxygen, and nitrogen, uh, which helps us uh, stay a bit longer on the bottom and, and dive a bit more safely and efficiently. You can see the, the rearmost hatch there. The uh, schooner was carrying uh, corn on its last trip in 1860 coming down Lake Huron. Uh, headed for Buffalo. Nice shot of the main mast there and uh, right after that main mast, right behind it is the, the bilge pump, uh, the main the main bilge pump. There's actually two on, on board. Uh, heading up forward now, heading towards the bow. You can see a capstan, uh, capstan in, the, in the distance there to help uh, uh, raise and lower the anchor and also um, help assist with lifting uh, other items on board. Kind of right up on the, heading towards the bow now and uh, you'll see some, some damage. This is the collision damage that actually sent the Spangler to the bottom. Uh, was uh, rammed by the schooner race scene in uh, November 1860 and uh, sent the, the Spangler quickly to the bottom. You can see the damage damage here pretty pretty extensive. Hi, I'm Tony Casterly and I work for NOAA's Maritime Heritage Program and I'm going to be talking about photo mosaics on the schooner Spangler. And what we're doing is basically taking a video of the shipwreck and from the video I pull out still images which I then overlap uh, sequentially one after another to create a photo mosaic of the entire shipwreck. So you're going to see an entire picture of the shipwreck at one time taken from all those little video stills as you can see here. So what I'm doing on the computer screen is taking those individual screenshots from the video, overlapping them, and here you can see two hatches and part of the foremast. And here's a close-up of that where you can see I'm aligning the hatches up. I'm going to pull it down a little bit. And you can see afterwards, when everything's messed together, you can see the entire shipwreck in one snapshot. So there's some hatches again. And I'm just pointing things out. You can see the mast. There's the foremast. The hatch at the stern. You can still see some of the contents inside the cargo. And here we have the entire shipwreck at once in one single snapshot. I'm Pat Labadee, <clears throat> historian for the sanctuary. To record a shipwreck site, we use a variety of media. 
we use photographs and video. Uh, we also use mosaics, as you just saw, and archaeological site plans. Uh, a site plan can be either a very sophisticated drawing or a rather simplified one. And in this case, uh, a simplified drawing is used as an interpretive guide for divers and snorkelers and kayakers. And it gives a general idea of the arrangement of the wreck uh, and enables the divers to find their way around but also to understand what they're seeing. So we show all the principal details on deck, uh, the rigging and uh, deck equipment and hatches. For more information on the Kyle Spangler and other shipwrecks in Thunder Bay, as well as future podcast episodes, visit thunderbay.noaa.gov.